Uh, we're going to start with Cynthia Garbett of the New Zion. So I'm going to do a quick intro, and then I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And then, Cynthia, you'll share your screen, and you'll run through your presentation. If you're having any technical, technical difficulties or anything, uh, let me know. I'll, I'll call up your presentation. But the, uh, our preference is that you run it if you're OK with that. Does that sound good, Cynthia? Yes. All right. So give me a sec to just make a quick intro, and then you will be up. So Cynthia Garbett of the New Zion has some very exciting news to share. She is the daughter of an immigrant, uh, uh, grew up uh, in uh, very working class conditions to a mother who is a seamstress. And she is now building um, sustainable bags through found materials um, that are now high fashion items. And she was just selected to be part of the 10th season of an entrepreneur reality show called The Blocks. Uh, and Cynthia is going to tell us a little bit about that amazing marketing opportunity, the incredible Cynthia Garbett of the New Zion. Okay. So if I can do this properly, my first time. Okay. You got it. You is got it, it up? Is that all right? Okay. Okay. okay, I'll go on then. Everybody can hear me, yeah? Okay, so this so is Cynthia. Of, Cynthia, uh, um, sorry, sorry. Please pl press slideshow in the upper right hand corner. Thank okay. you. Is that it? Yes, you got it. Yes, please proceed. Okay, so this is a bit of my story, and that of the New Zion. It's a sustainable fashion and advocate of high consciousness consumerism through participation and education as a brand. Its capsule range of casual resort and streetwear includes reserve, uh, reversible concealed vented hats, bucket hats and sun hats, um, reversible tote bags, beach bags, mini bags, yoga mat bags, uh, limited stock items like watches and custom design fine jewelry. And I use um, lab grown stones and I designed uh, unisex casual shirts, also cargo pants. These that I, I design, I also craft by machine and finish by hand. The brand's range will also include uh, home fashions, furniture, and accessories. So it'll be a um, comprehensive lifestyle brand. So the next slide, please. You have to advance uh, your own slides. How do, how do I? Well, hit the right arrow on your just, keyboard. That, that should do it for you, Cynthia. Oh, OK. Cool. Hey. There you go. OK, so this is some of my stuff. That That's a picture of me um, sewing, actually. That's the tote bag on the right. Okay, so my roots in sustainability and fashion go way back to my early childhood in the early 60s. I had a very skilled and talented mother and a meticulous DIY father. They were children of the 20s. They immigrated from Central America, particularly Honduras, to the, to the U.S. in New Orleans in the 1950s because my dad was a merchant mariner. And his work ended after 40 years traveling the world many times. But after his retirement and up until his death, he joined my mom, my brother, in their home fashions, crafting, upholstery, refinishing, furniture, restoring, and building workshop. And this is a picture of a project that we all worked on together. I was an apprentice of theirs. And I also worked as a junior interior designer for an uh, interior studio and also a landscape uh, studio in New Orleans. This was a restoration project. The house actually belonged to a free person of color back in the 1800s in New Orleans. So it was an amazing project to work on. The house still stands. My old, older siblings and I were taught to plan 
with a mindset of no waste and recycling to work diligently with our hands and to create and produce quality aesthetics that would be admired with pride. As a teenager, I sought formal education in fashion in New York, but with my strict upbringing and the morals of the 1970s, I wasn't allowed. So I completed a local education in interior design, but I found myself mostly employed by architectural studios, some large, some boutique size that specialized in commercial projects and a few luxury residences where I was designing furniture and lighting and managing quite a large range of architectural projects. So after 15 years, I decided to start an in-home practice of my own and things were going along very well until that infamous Hurricane Katrina hit and later my mother died. So I left the US to go and live in Germany and the UK. And it was in Germany that I became so impressed by and learned about sustainability on a national level. In London, I learned about the fashion industry by modeling their clothes and working for an online and B2B fashion uh, wear brand for women that also had a factory. And I worked in various capacities there. I learned the operations of the fashion business, but I did not want to copy its blatant wastefulness in the mundane drone-like assembly line production. All of this ran against the grain of my upbringing. In the US, for each person, there are 80 pounds of tossed out fashion every year. And this picture shows what happens to 90% of it. So each of us has a massive wasteful problem. Becoming more aware of the need for me to express my creativity and artisan spirit, I began to conceive my brand by business planning, sketching, drawing, artwork, designing fine jewelry, all that represented my epiphany and my roots in higher consciousness. And during the next two years, I became like downloaded with directions to shape my brand. And these, this download seems to come from so like another world, a a different dimension. And it it came with such specificity directing me on how my brand should be uh, collected. But it wasn't until returning to the US two years ago and experiencing heat and humidity that I had never before like that, this in Southern Florida. And I began observing people burning up their heads and wearing ill-fitted hats. And I decided to redesign bucket hats and sun hats for a better fit, wearability, the style, of course, and sun protection, and the added measure of upcycling and repurposing garments. So my brand's unique product that fills a need was created. And it was here in Miami that I began to network with locals via the public library system that directed me to county supported programs to develop my business to the pre-launch phase it is now and to go beyond and to organizations and companies like uh, BizHack where I've been learning about AI tools for sales and marketing like ChatGBT, Canva and Dolly that I'm getting to practice the use of in my business. I frequently surf at, um, surf on Instagram so I can get more knowledge about business and entrepreneur education and about news of such. And it was 
on Instagram about three weeks ago that a message popped up from someone I'd never heard of and about something that I'd also never heard of. And they invited me to apply to this contestant competition reality mm, documentary show called The Blocks. And it's especially for startup entrepreneurs like myself that's created and hosted by Wes Bergman, who is a career reality show contestant who has turned multi-millionaire entrepreneur extraordinaire and television producer. Well, it's a six-day grueling rapid fire head-to-head Q&A back-to-back pitch, pitch session before fellow competitors of 100 plus and about a dozen very supportive co- uh, coaches praying that you don't fuck it up because you did so well in the practice pod. It's an uber accelerated crash course, lead a jersey wearing education and business marketing lingo, planning and equity. The final head to head is left to just a handful of the top of the top that are battling for cash prizes, awards, and the coveted low equity investment. But there are no real losers on this show. The week of testing to the limit and the raking over ends up with businesses being more forged, strategic networks are created, collaborators are solidified, and there's a kinship like no other between like-minded risk takers that's bonded that lasts long after it's a wrap rings out. So as Dan pointed out, I'm cast in season 10 of The Blocks, which begins filming in March 2024. I'm sorry, it's my dyslexia in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I'm hopefully anticipating a win for the best startup. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Really appreciate uh, that, uh, sharing that. And, um, you know, good luck. Uh, We're going to keep the chat going. And will you let us know how you do? Definitely. Definitely. There's several steps, you know, uh, until the filming. We even receive a workbook to help us to become familiar with some of the the jargon and the process of um, acquiring equity. Wonderful.